previous work. Uh, I know we don't have as much as um, everybody else did, pretty much just the SSOC and the relay response. And then I'll show you the model results for the proportional controller, what they said, and then the experimental results, what I actually found out running the experiments and doing the plots. And finally, I'll wrap up with conclusions. Uh, this is our system right here. Uh, pretty much the same. You got your, your input, your manipulated variable, motor input, going in the cooling system, and you got your control variable, the water temperature, which is what uh, the sensor monitors. Here's some pictures. Over here on the left is going to be the sensor going into the outlet. That's what measures the temperature. And over here is an example of one of the two dampers that are on the system. And uh, for our experiment, we had both of our dampers closed throughout the course of it. Here's the SSOC. And this is from 40 to 80 percent input is the operating range. You can see this is where the slope uh, was pretty much the same throughout throughout each region, 40 to 50, so on and so forth. Um, and then you got the output operating uh, range, which was from uh, 46 to 64 degrees Celsius. This is the steady state operating range. And here I calculated the max slope, which was from 40 to 50 percent input. And uh, it came out to be negative 0 0.60 degrees Celsius per percent and the minimum slope was in the region from 70 to 80 percent input and it came out to be negative 0.3 uh, degrees C per percent and the average uh, slope across the whole steady state operating range was 0.45 and there I don't know if you can see it but there's the actual uh, linear equation of the line that I used to get my average slope Um, jumping into the relay response uh, experiment we did, here on the graph you can see that the two parameters we were really measuring were the period, T, uh, excuse me, I think I had that backwards, yeah, I had that backwards. It was actually 14 seconds and M bar over there is actually supposed to be 60, but that was for those parameters. And the other parameter we needed when we were going to calculate the ultimate frequency in the KC uh, U for the system was delta C, which averaged out to be 1.7 degrees Celsius. And this is um, with an input baseline at 50% and 57 degrees Celsius as the set point. And the conclusion to the relay response experiment was that once we plugged everything into the formula there you see at the top we got a KCU of negative 90 percent uh, per degree Celsius and our ultimate frequency FU came out to be 0 0.7 cycles per second. Um, the model the model results what we came up with first before we actually executed the proportional only controller experiment are here in the table. Most of these numbers actually came from y'all uh, we just used them. We figured out the ratios of KC over KCU and averaged them out and that's what you see in yellow is the ratios. Uh, we then multiplied it by the KCU we got from the relay response experiment of negative 90 to get our KC values that we're going to use uh, for purportedly for ultimate quarter to K, one tenth as you can see and they're all the way over here to the far right those are the values. Another thing we needed to do before we could execute the experiment was to confirm that the M bars that we got from our SSOC were actually valid and we did that by plotting them with uh, whatever M bar we were trying to test out in a KC equal to zero and seeing if it reached the set point and became steady state, which as you can see it you know pretty much did right there at the end it was steady state. And then once we knew all that we went to the to actually getting the experiments run, doing the plots. And here's just one of them. We ran like 15 because there was five for each of the three regions that we did. The three regions were from 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and 70 to 80 percent. And the KC here we used was a negative 0.59, so we could try to get quarter to K and a 70 percent input baseline, changing the set point from 49 to 53 degrees Celsius. 
and once the decay ratio was calculated out, it came out to be 0 0.22. Uh, unfortunately, in this experiment, most of the time, uh, almost all the time that we ran the experiments, they had one peak where they went over the set point, and then they immediately settled out to the set point and rode it at a steady state the whole way, which made it really hard to calculate any kind of decay ratio or offset for that matter. But here, the three decay ratios I was able to calculate, two for the KCU and one from the one quarter that I showed you earlier. Everything else was pretty much a bust as far as that goes. Here's a marginal stability. For this one, I picked a KC that was really a large negative number so that I could get the graph to continually oscillate along the set point as you see it doing. And the ultimate frequency, once I calculated, uh, came out to be, I believe, uh, 0 0.7. If I used that formula right there, FU equals 1 over T, where T was averaged, and here you see the different, the different periods that I collected for the, uh, the crest and averaged together what they were and then plug them into that formula to get 0 0.072. And then finally, one thing I did, I ran um, a Ziegler-Nichols with the parameter of KCU, which was negative 90 divided by 2, using that tuning parameter to get a negative 45 KC. And I ran that to see if it would actually get quarter decay. And right here you see the first peak, this, um, this amplitude right here, that's that. And the second one you can't even see because it's so close. But I expanded it out and measured it. And it came out with a decay ratio of about 0.10. Uh, one note, there was one graph that I was actually able to measure an offset on. And it was for an uh, input baseline of 80%. And here shows the offset right here. And it came out to be uh, 1.13 plus or minus about 0.17 degrees Celsius. Um, going into my conclusions, like I said, there was only one experiment that uh, yielded a usable decay ratio of 0.22, where the theoretical value is actually 0.25. And once you do a percent difference, you get a percent error of 13.6% between those two values. So that's fairly close. And the ultimate frequency from the proportional only experiment was calculated to be 0 0.07, which if you remember, that's exactly what we got from the relay experiment. So that seems like that's a pretty valid number right there. That probably is the ultimate frequency. Um, also, again, the Ziegler and Nichols, I got 0.10 for the decay ratio, where it should have been 0.25 if it was actually quarter decay. So that gives a, a really big percent error of 150%. And again, of all the experiments run, only the one at 80% input baseline gave the offset that you see right there. And, I mean, uh, sum it up that the, this experiment really wasn't good for trying to calculate decay ratios just because the second peak was too small and not able to be measured. And every trial had like a very, very insignificant offset, so again, that wasn't a problem. But the recommendation is that uh, further experiments be run using the proportional integral controller to see if maybe there's a way to determine the decay ratios that way. Thank you. Any questions? Hand those in. Sure. You got another Kit Kat up there, Annie? Yep. Oh. What? You got two? Yeah, but I got a whole new bag. Tim, <laughs> she got a whole new bag of Kit Kat.